featherweights with Prince Nassim when they get hit, it's a whole different story. When they get hit, it breaks the concentration and they get ready to get knocked out. I just hope that they're all safe. That's what I hope. Well, I pick out the best. I picked out a fight. I picked a fighter that is basically harder and a better puncher and more dangerous The Barrera Mal Morales. All of them guys, and they never came to the table except Augie. Damn, right. I'm looking good. All right. B Barrera and Morales, m many observers feel, will be fights that really define you as the great fighter you want to be recognized as. Yeah. When do you think you will get in the ring with them, or vice versa? Listen, I told you, and you know, Larry, that I wanted them in the ring for this fight, and they wouldn't come. Now you can tell there's a little bit of a thing on my throat, but you know what I mean? I came to the ring as a champion, as a five-year celebrating my reign, and that guy tried to destroy it. But Morales and Barrera will come 2001 when they want it. And when they want it, they'll get knocked out, because I want it now. Thank you very much. Witness, there's only one God, Allah, and Muhammad is his final messenger. That's what I said, Larry, on the Bungu fight. Thanking you. I'm with Prince Nassim Hamed. Prince, let's get right to it. You have been criticized in the past for not taking on the strongest of opposition, but tonight you definitely step up, taking on Marco Antonio Barrera. At what point did you decide you wanted to get in the ring with the best of the best? It's not me that decided that I wanted to get in the ring with the best of the best. That, 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 that's not happening. It's them that decided with me. I offered the fight for Barrera way before he took the fight, and he refused the fight. So you got a little bit, you mixed up a little bit, you're a little bit confused with that. Them guys stepped up to the table after I offered it them. And when I did offer it them the first time, they refused. And now is the time uh, it's going to happen because he's accepted. And all the rest of them cats, if they want it, they'll get it too. Your power is well documented, 31 knockouts in 35 fights. He says he's going to attack you, come out right away and try to attack your body. At what point will you do, from a defensive standpoint, what will you do to keep him off balance? Let him do whatever he wants to do. I believe in Allah. I'm a Muslim and I'll be out there and I'll be ready to fight and I'll be ready for anything and everything that he brings. Uh, I've basically got too much power for that boy, too much speed for that boy, and I'm going to pro prove it tonight that I'm the best featherweight in the whole world. Barrera is a more of a stand there type guy. He is truly, to me, one of the best 122 pounders ever to come through the division. But he's had a lot of big fights, a lot of wars. And a lot of guys who were at the end of their careers gave him an awful hard time. That should not have happened. Now, the other guy on the other hand, the Prince, is a totally different fighter. He's a puncher. He has one punch power. He can knock out probably a few left with the punch power because he's so strong. He's flamboyant. He doesn't care about beating you with skills or not just his skills, but with an accumulation of punches like Guerrero does. He wants to go out there and bang you out. He wants to hit you here, hit you there, catch you with that big shot and get it over there. He doesn't want to play. So you got a classical boxer against a big country. Stakes couldn't be higher. And a quick word about the tactical face-off. Prince Nassim is a southpaw who usually dispenses with the jab relatively early, squares his shoulders, and throws power punches. Parker a boxing, not just wading in, gets to the body, wobbles nails with a left hook upstairs. Round one is all Barrera, as Prince Nassim takes several power shots from the Mexican star. He not be able to give advice. You gotta work on his... Shades of the Cesar Soto bout in Detroit. Herrera's fighting the way he is. Yet. Herrera lands a jab. And Big left hand by Herrera inside. Stuns Prince Nassim. He hasn't got in one position yet. Ooh. Every round, Herrera should send him to the corner hurt. And a couple of them were good hard shots. <laughs> Big left hand by Prince Nassim. You know he was thrown off. <laughs> Huge left hand by Barrera. Now for the first time you see Whoa. one landed solidly. Naz stalking and trying to lead. He's in business. All right. <laughs> Big left hook by Barrera. Professional fighters. Harold, how do you have it through nine? Okay. 
Six to three, 87, 84. Marco Antonio Barrera the last four rounds. He's thrown the left hand, but he hasn't thrown anything with it. Can you believe the odds on this fight with three and a half to one? I Can you believe 28 out of 30 riders picked him at? Where is the respect for Marco Antonio Barrera? Well, I bet it's there, right? The combinations have been thrown by and such. Well, see, even though, I don't think he's ever been hurt in the fight, but when he gets hit, his head is up so to the point that Naz has got to try to land a big knockout punch. He that the Prince has developed since he was a boy. Take that advice. He's going for it. He's been on. I think Barrera has already shown with his chin, one left hand won't do it. That's true. Too much chin. Barrera pounds Nassim into the ring post, risking disqualification. Furious at Naz's antics. I'm out. Big left hook by Barrera. for the winner by unanimous decision Marco Antonio